Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. of Jesus and Mary and Joseph be blessed now and forever in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be vigilant because you do know that not know the time or the hour. It says in the scripture passage of the the five wise and the five foolish virgins. Today we have the wisdom and the holiness of a great Saint, Saint Scholastica, twin of Saint Benedict. The twins often share the same interests and ideas with equal intensity. Therefore, it's no surprise that Scholastica and her twin brother, Saint Benedict, established religious communities within a few miles from each other. Born in the year 480, of wealthy parents, Scholastic and Benedict were brought up together until he left central Italy for Rome to continue his studies. Little is known, though, of Scholastica's early life, but she founded a religious community for women near Monte Cassino at a place called Plombaria, which is five miles from where her brother, brother governed a monastery. The twins visited each other once a year in a farmhouse because Scholastica was not permitted to be inside the monastery. They spent these times discussing spiritual matters. According to the dialogues of Saint Gregory the Great, the brother and sister spent their last day together in prayer and conversation. Scholastica sensed it was her time to pass into eternity. Her death was close at hand. She begged Benedict to stay with her until the next day. He refused her request because he did not want to spend the night outside the monastery, thus breaking his own very rule. But Scholastica asked the Lord to let her brother remain, and a severe thunderstorm then broke out, preventing Benedict and his monks from returning to the abbey. Benedict cried out, Thus, God forgive you, sister, what have you done? Scholastica replied, I asked a favor of you, and you refused. I asked it of God, and he granted it. So the brother and sister parted the next morning after a long spiritual discussion. And three days later, Benedict, it was said, was praying in his monastery, and he saw the soul of his sister rising heavenward, in the form of a beautiful white dove. Benedict then announced the death of his sister to the monks and later buried her in the tomb he had prepared for himself. Perhaps if you imitate the wondrous virtues of the saint today, Saint Scholastica, then your loved ones too you may see their soul taken flight into heaven. The best and the most holy and easy way is to take flight, though, through Mary. The Mother Mary, as Saint Louis Grignon de Montfort tells us in his bombshell writings, True Devotion to Mary. This is a book which all serious souls, all serious souls pursuing a life of Christian virtue and perfection must read. Are you that soul searching? Then read this life-changing treatise from heaven and understand who is Mary. To understand the necessity to hand yourself over to the mother to secure the shortest and the holiest and the most edifying way to encounter Jesus Christ our Savior. To understand how to be a slave of Mary. If you die as such a slave, your death will be a sweet passage to paradise, where your soul will leap 
with overflowing joy into the sweet embrace of the mother. Know well also that handing yourself over or consecration to Mary means in true devotion. Louis de Montfort tells us, the most perfect of all devotions is that which conforms, unites, and consecrates us most completely to Jesus Christ. Now of all God's creatures, Mary is the most conformed to Christ. It therefore follows that of all devotions, devotion to her makes for the most effective consecration and conformity to him. The more one is consecrated to Mary, thus the more one is consecrated to Jesus Christ. That's why perfect consecration to Jesus is but a perfect and complete consecration of oneself to the lady. It is a perfect renewal of the vows and promises of our holy baptism. This magnificent consecration, devotion, consists of giving oneself entirely to Mary in order to belong entirely to Jesus Christ through her. It requires us to give these following things. This is the magnificence of this form of love for Our Lady. It requires us to give our body with its senses and members, our soul totally with all its faculties, our present material possessions and all that we shall acquire in the future, and our interior and spiritual possessions, that is, our merits, our virtues, and good actions of the past, present, and future. In other words, we give all that we have and possess, both in the natural and the spiritual order, to the Lady, for the glory of the Lord in heaven. This we do without any reservation or any holding back, even of a penny, a hair, or the smallest good deed. And we give for all eternity without claiming or expecting in return for our offering and our service any other reward than the honor of belonging to the Lord Jesus Christ through the mother. Magnificent. Note here two things must be considered regarding our good works, namely the satisfaction and the merit. In other words, their satisfactory or prayer value and the meritorious value. Now by this consecration to the lady, we give all our satisfactory and prayer value as well as all our merits, all our merits that she may keep them, that she may increase them, may embellish them for us, and we give her our acts of atonement that she may apply them wherever she pleases for the greater glory of the Lord. Mary thus cannot be outdone in generosity. Why not then give all to Mary? She knows the big spiritual picture. Why not give her our life, death, and eternity? Why not give her our death, the timing, the type, and the place? Who knows when they are to pass into eternity? Give the death to the mother who will organize your passage with magnificent sweetness. The Blessed Virgin, Mother of gentleness and mercy, never allows herself to be surpassed in love and generosity. When she sees you, God willing, giving yourself to her entirely to honor and serve her and depriving yourself of what you prize most, order, most in order to adorn her, she gives herself completely in a wondrous manner to you. She will engulf you with an ocean of graces, adorn you with her merits, support you with her power, enlighten you with her light, and fill you with her beautiful love. She shares her virtues with you, her humility, her faith, and her purity. She makes up for your failings 
and becomes your representative before Jesus Christ. So give yourself to the lady. With this consecration, we give ourselves to Jesus, or we possibly can give him. And in the most perfect manner, through Our Lady's hands. This is such a devotion that even surpasses those promises made and vows in the religious orders. Many of the members of the religious orders give to God their earthly goods by the vows of poverty, poverty, the goods of the body by the vow of chastity, and their free will by the vow of obedience. Sometimes the freedom of movement by the vow of enclosure. But they do not give him by these vows a liberty and right to dispose of the value of their good works and merits. They do not despoil themselves of what a Christian considers most precious and most dear, his merits and satisfactions. So anyone who in this way consecrates and sacrifices himself voluntarily with the act of his free will to Jesus Christ through Mary no, may no longer dispose of the value of his good actions, all his sufferings, all his thoughts, words, and deeds belong to Mary. She can dispose them according to her will, for the will of her son and for his greater glory. This dependence, however, does not deter from our state of life. For example, a priest sacrificing the Holy Mass has to offer this up for a specific intention. For the consecration can only be made in accordance with the order established by God in keeping with the duties of one's state in life. So ponder well this message, ponder well this beautiful reality now that you can hand yourself over to the beautiful lady for the glory of the Lord. This is the bombshell then of the true devotion to lady, true devotion to Mary, the slavery and consecration, the bombshell. Did you know that a bomb entered the Monte Cassino where St. Scholastic is buried with St. Benedict in World War II and parked itself next to the joint tombs of the twins today, Benedict and Scholastica, in February 1944. Although the abbey was completely destroyed by the Allies, it was even being protected by a Catholic who was the German, but it was obliterated, the Monte Cassino, but this bomb next to their tombs never detonated or exploded. But if you consecrate and hand yourself over to the lady, now in these times there will be an enormous explosion, an explosion of joy resounding in the choirs of angels in heaven for the glory of God for all eternity. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary and Joseph be blessed now and forever in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.